Welcome to Grad Job Season 3. Today, we have a young guest, Ms. Rajkumari Veshali with us. Welcome to the show, ma'am. And if you could just introduce yourself to our listeners. Uh, my name is Rajkumari Vishali and I'm 24 years old. I live in Meerut, Uttar Pradesh. I am currently preparing for central government exams okay. and some professor exams. So you're preparing for the entrance exams? Yes. Not entrance. Central government exams. Central government exams. Okay. So, um, how was it for you since last year? Actually, my plans uh, last year were pretty simple. When I thought that I was, uh, the window was closing for me, uh, my marks and the merit marks, they were coming very close. I thought that the next exam, I will crack it if I pay more attention. Then... All of a sudden, this COVID happened and all the exams got postponed and everything became stagnant at that very point. This happened to me twice, in the beginning of 2020 and in the beginning of 2021. Okay. So I'm a bit, uh, everything has been gone mishmash since then. So your plans have been challenged, let's say, twice. Yes. And how did you manage to cope with it? I'm just uh, thinking that I should keep studying. I should not stop. Last year, I stopped studying and I stopped everything. I thought that I'm already done with everything and when the exams will come, I'll revise and do it. But that's not the way actually you should never stop studying you should never stop doing anything you should keep it uh, low but you should keep going never stop just keep studying little by little every day so that you never lose the touch i lost the touch last year but this year i'm doing it much better way that's really inspirational for those who are in this in the same process or similar process as you are going through so um in all this uh, preparation wait and watch and appearing and reappearing again how did you adjust to the situation i completed my post graduation 2019 after that i seriously i took uh, i took this seriously that i have to get a job because my parents said that now that your education is formally completed, if you want to do something else, you can do, but you have to get a job and stand for yourself, be independent. Because, uh, you know, nowadays you need to be independent financially and uh, in the society too. You, do, you need to have a status for yourself. You can stand and say that I can do it myself. I don't need anyone else. And I can take care. I can even say that, uh, no, you know, uh, in future, I can say that I can take care of my parents. As I don't have a brother or anything. But I just have an elder sister. We both sisters, we decided that we will have jobs, proper jobs, so that in future, our parents don't uh, get into trouble, any kind of trouble after getting married also even after us getting married they don't get in, in any trouble that's really thoughtful uh, as yes. the daughters you are like you know thinking ahead and making sure that no problems as you said that your parents should go through later on that's a wonderful thought and uh, I salute you for this thought process. And um, I think if every daughter should think like that. Mm -hmm. True. All the daughters uh, should not just think that, okay, we have studied, now we'll get married. 
some of uh, I live in Uttar Pradesh, and when I studied in the college, the CPS University, most of the girls are there just to get a degree, so that they can show it to the people when they uh, ask come to marry her. Mm-hmm. That this is my uh, qualification. They, uh, I've heard this from girls. They do this for this only. A qualification for marriage. It's it's not fair actually. It's not fair to the qualification itself. You are studying something. It should mean something. You are a human being. You should uh, make a difference, not not to the world, but at least to your own world, which is your family. Absolutely. And if you can do that, that that is the only thing you should focus on. So do you live in a joint family or nuclear family? Nuclear family. Okay. And emotionally, how have you all dealt as a family? Emotionally, actually, my my father uh, was also an employee in bank. He retired in two thousand nineteen at the end of two thousand nineteen, and he knows what uh, things you have to go through. And same is my elder sister. She's also in bank. They both uh, know uh, what is the pressure of exam and everything. But they both uh, gave. My father gave exam at least when he was twenty years old, and now he's sixty. So, like forty years ago, he gave that exam. And since then, till now, the exam, the level, everything has been changed. so i had to explain it to them that this 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 has happened everything has changed the syllabus has been uh, increased the level has been you know there is a very difficult level now not like before and it's it's really hard so they understood it and they are supporting me as they can my father is not even uh, he never says to me that why not doing this he never pressurizes me for anything He just says to take your time, but do it properly. That's really nice because it's very encouraging when parents support their children, and uh, yet give a wise advice, which we all should, you know, take care of. Yes, so we should take care of things like this, and no parent should uh, pressurize their kids. if they are going to this like right now in uh, in this situation especially you should tell your children to go with it slowly do one thing at a time but do it properly so that when you face the exam when you go and appear for the exam you are at least confident for that 10 question you attempt you don't you know you don't come out of the exam and think oh my god did i do it right or did i do it wrong not you should never be confused of what you have attempted that is true and uh, what you have rightly said that despite of the fact that uh, there is uh, uh, like no surety as to when the next exam absolutely is going to happen but in the same waiting process we should keep on doing a bit yes we should not stop never stop uh, or you or you will lose the touch of the study one thing i i would like to tell people whoever is listening this and preparing for the exam never get scared of the syllabus okay it is there to scare you of course because it is really vast there's a vast syllabus especially when it comes to uh, one topic which is called uh, gk it has the current affairs and it has all the subjects other than maths and english it has all the subjects in it but to never get scared of that because uh, you can do it not the 100% but at least if you are able to do 80% of it it's more than enough Not all of the things are going to come in the exam. 
or not every question you read in the book will come on the exam only some of it will come try to read the previous year question paper try to uh, catch the phrases of the teachers you follow or either on youtube or on any app if they are repeating something if they are saying that this is important then note that down because it is important and it is uh, and if something is repeated then you should prepare that for sure so wise advice from you also wise advice <laughs> from ha uh, yes i have a wise advice for um, as uh, i was uh, i was uh, i did my post graduation in english literature okay i was really very keen about the subject i'm very very interested in it and so i would like to tell people that if you are doing you are doing this find out if you can do something in your subject of your post graduation and graduation not in anything else if you go for anything else because the world is doing it so you might fail some might fail as i did because i went straight towards maths and science those were not my subjects i should have gone some other way and now after 2 years i have realized that no this is not my torch i cannot do anything here but i have changed a little uh, i changed my course course uh, and i have kept it as an option that if this still doesn't work i have this the other thing do something in my subject also because there are options in the government exams also that i can do something in my subject okay so it's like having a plan b also simultaneously yes right and, and not you should not go for plans or uh, you know some people do this that if i cannot do this i'll do this not this then this you should not uh, make some plans like a b c d these are my plans i'll go if this not works out i'll do this they give up easily they think that i have plans so i might uh, give up plan a first and work on plan b and if plan b doesn't work does not work then plan c don't do that also just work on one keep trying and at one point when you realize that you cannot do this anymore or this is difficult for you then change your course okay after giving your best uh, uh, try part and your best efforts yes that is exactly what i'm saying you have to give your best to plan a first right then you go to plan b that's good because, because sooner or later if you are giving your best you will get some results for sure i got results but those were not 100% because nowadays the exams have been divided into four phases two phases four phases when my sister used to give exam there were only one phase and an interview and now i have four phases so right. it actually is very overwhelming to deal with okay so i thought that i should keep a plan b and work on it as well since everything else is stagnant because uh, this covid 19 this has uh, given some people uh, opportunity to think what they are doing in life and because they had a lot of time they could have changed it so i used this time to change my course so you used it for the better version of your path towards your life yes Uh, something that interests me more than some other subjects that's good actually you know to make the use of the time available in the right way that's nice and uh, during these uh, 
uh, last year and today, I mean this year, any interesting episode that happened that you can recollect, okay, this is a lockdown memory. Besides the study and education part, I realized uh, that I can write. Wow. People were appreciating. I started writing regularly. I used to do it before also, but uh, not on a regular basis. So I'm focusing on that also, taking one thing on a day that I'll do this today and I do that for that day only, 24 hours to this thing. And I'll complete this thing and then I'll go forward to the other one. So I do writing nowadays. I have been published in some books also. Congratulations. Thank you. That's wonderful to know because uh, as you had said that you used to write before also and now that you have the time and you have started actually working on it on a daily basis and uh, therefore, you know, the results are out that uh, people are appreciating the books have been published and you are an established author. Yes. Actually, uh, this began when I was in my post-graduation. My teachers used to say to me that you have a good command on language. So from there, I got some inspiration and I started writing a little bit. I, I have my blog. People read that too. And some of them appreciate it. Not more people. Actually, uh, I don't have a big following, but still. Even 10 people read it out of 10 million, it's, it's good for me. And they give me feedback, which is very helpful. That, yes, I'm doing it good, and I can do it more. This 10 can change into 20. And even if the number is increasing slowly, I don't mind it. People are recognizing my work. That is the best part. And from this, we can learn that we should always listen to the teachers, if they're telling something, if they're saying something that you, uh, this is your best part, because they are experienced and they know it, what they are talking about. So you should listen to them also. That's again, a wise word from you that yes, as we grow up and we interact with the teachers and with, of course, our followers also, and they share their feedback, then it's like very important. The number always doesn't you know, hold its importance. More important is how passionate you are towards that task. Yes. Recently, I started an online book club. I thought that many people will sign up for it, but uh, only six people turned up in the first meeting. I was actually very sad. But then I thought that even six people, including me, seven. So we did, we had a blast. We all talked very nicely. We all talked about ourselves, what we are doing and everything. And whatever the theme was that on the first meeting, we talked about it properly. Even the seven people made a lot of sense. Absolutely. Step so by step, everything. That, Yes, that gives us a lesson that we should never think about, okay, it, it might fail, but what if it might work? If it works, then it can have some, you can have something very beautiful. Now I have six more friends who are like me, who are interested in books, who love to read, and I can share with them every day. And it's a very wonderful feeling for me because I love making friends and love knowing that people like me uh, are also struggling, but they are dealing with it like I am dealing with it. I'm sure after listening to you, um, those who are in this process of, uh, you know, redefining their themselves, they will realize that we need to keep on and dedicate to a task on a daily basis. 
so that that progress yes. happens slowly but for sure confidently with that yes. uh, what would you like to say to the youth as to um, how they should you know any anything that you would like to share with them uh i would like to share a moment when i failed on one of the exams which i prepared a lot i used to wake at night to prepare for that exam but i failed and on the result day when the result came out i cried for like two hours i literally did that but and it was a setback for me because after that for month or two i thought that this is useless i prepared a lot and i studied a lot and nothing happened so you should never lose hope you should never lose you know as i said before you should never lose the touch of studies you should keep on going if this is not working then the second exam will come and it will work for sure if you have done uh, 80% right now give your 100% next time and it will work for sure one day for sure it will work but, but if but it will only work if you work with it absolutely yes and so this is the special message in the end like before we wind up any yeah, a special word of advice or message that you would like to share with them it's a very old saying that uh, god helps those who help themselves so please help yourself first and don't go on the words of uh, other people or relatives or anyone saying that you cannot do this this is very hard you know some people choose to go for upsc which is the hardest exam one of the hardest exams in india but uh, it is if a person studies very properly for it if a person knows that what you have to study and they follow the real the actual protocol for it then they can succeed many people have succeeded so it does not mean that if anyone is putting saying that you cannot do this don't listen to them listen to yourself work for yourself you have to be better than yourself don't look at your cousin if they have uh, done it at the age of 24 or 22 and you are 25 and still sitting at home studying every day if you can do it just do it properly don't listen to anyone don't look at anyone don't compare yourself with anyone because everyone's life everyone's mind and perspective and way of studying also is very different okay yeah that is uh, really you know i I'm, i'm sure this will be really helpful and uh, as you have said yes work for yourself do whatever preparation you are doing do it properly and since everyone's perspective is different one should retain one's own perspective and what they would like to achieve as a priority rather than succumbing to the thought process or the words others share it's more important what is important for you yourself and you have actually shared it very beautifully thank you so much rajkumari uh, for giving your valuable time to us and sharing as thank to you. how you had uh, you know actually molded the time that you had for a better version of yourself thank you for having me and i'm really glad that if this small conversation of ours can help people even if five people uh, learn from it something then it's really good i believe it will be helping somebody somewhere as i always say 
we should keep on doing our bit and spread positivity in the best way we can and never compare ourselves with other people for sure you are unique yes. and uh, so is this podcast right now and this episode especially so take care and uh, be safe bye raj thank you same to you be safe thank you so much bye bye